verify that your interlocks are on by looking at the sentry governor. That's important because when you start using the smart cab system, it's going to communicate with the governor to ramp up to RPM mode and whatever the desired RPM is for that preset. If you don't have the interlocks made, it's not going to be able to do that. So once you've ensured that your interlocks are on, you're ready to start demonstrating smart calves. Smart calves is very simple to operate. Simply put your vehicle in pump gear, which we're simulating with the interlocks, and then select one of the ten presets. Here, I've only got five presets active. I've got a wet calves, a dry calves, a water only. I've got another water only and a foam. You can set these up any way that you want. These presets are configurable at the department level, so they set as, as few as one preset to as many as ten. The department can select the color of the bar of the preset, you can select the text, they select the icon, and they can select whether it's a water only, foam only, or a calves preset. So operation of smart calves is as simple as pressing the preset button. Once you've pressed the preset button, it's communicating with the sentry governor to ramp up to the desired RPM, and it's activated the foam system and the air system. The left side is your your foam indicators. You've got your foam power button, the increase and decrease for your foam percentage. You have a bar graph to let you know how hard the foam pump is running. On the right side you have the air power button. You've got the dry and the wet indicators and buttons and you've got the tank to pump valve. Bottom left hand corner is an indication of which preset is currently active. It's very easy to select a new preset. From your operation page, press the home button. It takes you back to the preset page. There's an active indicator flashing to let you know which preset is currently active. Just select the new preset you want. Returns to the operation page and sets up the foam and the air system for that preset. Bottom left hand corner is telling you what preset is currently active now. The color of the power buttons and the increase decrease buttons, same on the air side, indicate what the mode is. If you press the power button for air, it's going to turn off the air and it's going to gray out the dry and wet buttons and the red border around the air icon has gone away. That lets you know that the air system is currently off. The clutch is still on, but the air injection has been turned off. Same with the foam, press the foam button foam system turns off so it grays out all of the indicators. If you want to turn the clutch off, press and hold the air button for three seconds. It will pop up with a warning letting you know how long to hold it. And then the air system will be turned off. We have a flashing yellow indicator. This yellow indicator means that the clutch is off and the engine RPM is too high to re-engage the clutch. To re-engage the clutch, you press the air button again. However, because we have the indicator, we're going to get a warning that the engine RPM is too high to engage the clutch. So the engine speed is too high to engage the calves compressor clutch. The engine speed must be less than 900 RPM. You can bring the engine RPM down on the sentry governor under 900 and the warning will go away and you can touch the banner warning to make it disappear. Now you can engage the clutch again. To recap the simplicity of the system, I'll turn off the smart cab system by pressing the foam button. This will turn off the foam and the air. I'll also press the idle button on the sentry to bring the engine RPM down to idle. Now I can press the home button and bring us back to the preset page. Select any preset. It goes from the preset page to the operation page. It's activated foam. It's activated air. It's communicated with the sentry governor to ramp up to the engine RPM dictated by that preset. And it's ready to operate. Selecting a new preset is as simple as pressing the home button. Moving back to the preset page. Selecting a new preset and it's set the foam and the air for that preset. It's communicated with the governor again to ramp to the RPM set for that preset. The home button 
simply toggles between the operation page and the preset page. So here we are on the preset page where we're seeing the active preset. We can press the home button, move back to the operation page, press the home button again, you're back on the preset page. The menu button has two functions. First function is a toggle. When you press it, it just toggles the additional information. Pressing and holding three seconds takes us to the system menu. The system menu allows us to zero the total water and total foam flows, to set the simulated water flow value, to look at the maintenance binder, and enter passwords. The password keyboard is currently grayed out because the system is running. We can disable the system by pressing the power button here. Another powerful feature of the SmartCavs controller is the ability to include a maintenance minder. Press the maintenance minder and it takes us to the maintenance interval screen. For each interval it shows us either the due date or how many hours until that service is due. There's a pie chart to give you a visual indication of how soon until the maintenance is required. And then you have an I button next to it. Press the I button and it tells you what maintenance that interval requires. Another really powerful feature of the SmartCast controller is the ability to show tutorials. I like to show tutorials by going to the water flow calibration screen. Enter the password 6679 and we're at the calibration menu and I like to use the water flow calibration standard to show tutorials. Our water flow calibration uses a two point calibration, a high rate and a low rate for accuracy across the entire range. But we also have this eye indicator down here. This is a tutorial button. If you press that, it pops up the tutorial boxes that allows you to walk through the process of doing a water flow calibration. It tells you what each one of the buttons mean, what all the displays mean, and walks you through the process of, of a water flow calibration. Press the I button at any time to dismiss the tutorial. Typically when you're doing a water flow calibration using a smooth bore nozzle, a pitot gauge, and a lookup chart to determine water flow based on the pressure and the size of the nozzle. Well, We've included the chart inside the SmartCavs controller. If you press the chart button, it brings up the flow rate calculator. Simply select the size of your nozzle, the pressure that you're seeing on the pitot gauge, and it calculates the water flow rate for you. Then simply press the return button, brings you back to the water flow calibration screen, and it asks you where do you want to put that water flow value. Touch the display, and it populates that display with the value that you calculated on the previous screen. Another great feature of the smart caps is the ability to data log everything that's going on with the system. It data logs second by second data which is time stamped in a 500 hour rotating buffer and it's data logging everything from the water flow values, foam flows, which preset was selected, calibration values, everything that can be recorded in the system is being recorded. You can show that by hitting the exit button from your water flow screen, the exit button from the calibration menu, enter the password 3564 and it takes you to the save data log file to USB screen. The bar graph shows you how much of the 500 hours has been currently used and how many bytes. Simply plug a USB stick into the connector on the, the back of the display and press the save to USB button. The data log is a CSV format so you can open it in Excel. It's powerful in the fact that if you've forgotten to write down water usage or foam use, you can always pull that data back out afterwards.